I have to explain a few things before I get to the meat and potatoes of this video. The timing things that I replaced, I didn't put new parts on, I put used parts on. I do that a lot here at Naptown Tuner Garage because uh, I've got lots of used bike. You don't need to keep on explaining this, but I prefer to always put new parts on. Nickel and diming this high mile car and I'm diagnosing it. Uh, this is not how a typical shop would do it. This is how I'm able to scrunch by and I'm able to make YouTube videos. Uh, if I was buying brand new parts for absolutely everything, I'd be bankrupt. So, uh, the reason why the timing situation was out of hand with this is because there's a high mileage engine with some sludge going around. And actually, watch my other videos, I just recently threw an oil pump in it. I'm partly just making content as well, but, um, it's a really super high mile oil pump. I'm helping a friend out and I put a much lower mile oil pump in it. So I feel a lot better about it. And I needed to clean out the oil pan with the sludge in it anyway. And uh, I think that the oil pressure sender, sensor, if you will, was clogged up with sludge as well as the cam bridge and the VVT system. So. I just went ahead and blew all that out, cleaned it all out, and let's proceed with this video. This thing has an extended crank. It uh, takes a little bit longer to start, but what the real issue is, is there's a, a stalling while driving. It just straight up completely dies, and then you come to a stop and it restarts immediately. So uh, there's no faults. There's no faults. I, I checked all the faults. Actually, I went around and did all kinds of different things to it, but. The real reason why it's here is what we're about to address now. So there was a, a timing issue going on with it, but it was, uh, you just watched my other videos, but I didn't do the timing on the video. I went ahead and just slammed that out real quick. I replaced this magnetic adjuster. I replaced, replaced the cam bridge, the uh, reverse thread insert in this uh, intake cam. And uh, I went ahead and threw on a new cam position sensor because before I did that I verified that it had an updated timing chain updated timing chain tensioner and I verified that the timing was perfect by setting it to top dead center and uh, if you want a video on that I can show you one in the future but I didn't film it so after that we addressed that uh, there was an oil pressure issue I mean crazy enough but this thing has 240,000 miles it never had an oil pressure issue before but right as my buddy was leaving the light came on so I went ahead and kept it overnight and I threw an oil pump in it. So now I got to address the real issue, this uh, stalling while driving, because as I was test driving it, I experienced it myself. So the customer experienced it twice within a two week period. Uh, I experienced it after only driving about 20 miles. So I'm thinking fuel related. I'm thinking, I'm really hoping that it's just this high pressure pump because there is a sensor on it and you know typically it would set a fault but um this is the most prone piece to fill in the fuel system i've never replaced a fuel pump and i've never replaced a fuel pump module yet i'm not taking those things off the table but since this does have a slightly extended crank uh, anyway and that's one of the causes for this high pressure fuel pump to fail one of the other causes for this high pressure fuel pump to fail is for it just to leak fuel and it'll create a rich condition but it is very like i said it's very high prone to failure the other two i have not replaced a single one yet so i'm gonna put a brand used one on because i'm i'm just nickel and diamond trying to help a friend out here so i'm just gonna throw a known good one on and we're gonna see what happens and uh, this is an issue i know everyone likes diagnoses everyone likes real technician type things and eventually i'll bring you more of that but uh, you know we don't like just throwing parts at things and being parts changers we want to know how to fix things like the dealership style but uh, a lot of the dealership style as well is figuring out what are the most prone to fill parts and systematically doing it that way but in this particular case i can't really go through a science oriented technician oriented uh deal I, I mean i could but a lot of you guys don't have fancy scan tools anyway but i would have to verify exactly this is such a sporadic issue is so rare that this thing happens i would have to 
have like live feed, live data, when it happens, when it stalls, and then it starts up immediately. So this kind of situation, you really kind of just have to throw a stab at it. So we're starting with this and I'm gonna do a quick high pressure fuel pump change out. We're gonna see how long it takes me. I'll try to stay out of the way. Let's get started, start the timer. We've got this uh, spring clamp plier deal right here that we gotta get off the evap purge valve. Pop this thing loose with the panel clip pliers, push this out of the way, you get enough right there. I can pop the vacuum hoses off if I want. Now let's get the uh, Nipex pliers and uh, we're gonna take this ferrule nut here, open them up a little bit more. A little bit of a tight fit. I would probably suggest the average person to just go ahead and use a 17 millimeter wrench like you're supposed to. But I just really like my Nipex. Let's go pop the tab off the here and disconnect the wire. Let's uh, get our spring clamp pliers out again. And let's get our panel clip pliers out again. Push that out of the way. Now, with our 10 millimeter on a triple square. One up here. Well, stuck in there pretty good this time. Normally they just pop right out. Just trying to make a joke out of it. Let's take the new one. Toss it in. Now just barely start it because you got to go back and forth on these. Wouldn't hurt to lube up that o-ring before you put it in there. All right, now I didn't bring anything to pop this hose in, but this uh, Sometimes this nut gives you a problem. Sometimes it's lined up pretty good. In this case, it was lined up pretty good. Sometimes you have to put a pry bar or something underneath there and uh, help it along. But uh, I got it started and you really want to have it start, started to where you can uh, thumb it on by your fingers before you get a tool in there. But I got it most of the way on and now I'm just in the tightening phase. Just a couple more turns. The act of pulling that pump out uh, is gonna push that metal hose down a little bit and the problem is though, you can, uh, if you force it on there, you can strip out your brass fitting. 
All right, that's nice and tight. Throw our fuel hose back on, throw our clip back on. If you feel so inclined, you can replace this spring clamp with a worm clamp, but these spring clamp pliers don't distort that clamp near as bad as anything else does. I haven't had a problem with it leaking there after servicing it just like this. So, there you are. That's a fast fuel. I could have done it much faster, but it was fighting me. And then I was fumbling with it, trying to show the camera and it fell out of my hands. So, hope it was entertaining. Now, I should mention after you take that off, you're going to lose some fuel pressure. So the first time you start it, it might buck around a little bit or it might take a while to build the pressure back up. So we're not worried if it's an extended crank again right now. Told you it was gonna do that. <laughs> <laughs> 